Well, maybe not to answer to him, but may, maybe to answer to the world that if all the thousands of people that Stig emailed to uh, during his, his life could present an email, what does that show? Uh, I don't recognize that close relationship during the 30 years I lived with Stig. And I'm quite sure that my, our friends and his colleagues can, can say the same. Uh, his uh, colleague since 20 years for the British uh, anti-fascist magazine Searchlight did not even know that Stig had a brother. After 20 years he comes to Stig's funeral ceremony in Stockholm and there he finds out that Stig had a brother. Huge surprise to him. So I think this is an uh, unnecessary argument or unnecessary proof, uh, invalid proof. Uh, one email compared to the 30 years I lived with Stig and the 20 years that Graham Atkinson worked with him or any other friend had. It's, it's nice Stig sent him, sent him an email fine, but that doesn't mean anything else. Absolutely not. He had uh, a distant relation to his father given that he wasn't brought up in that family. He was living for nine years with his maternal grandfather and grandmother and that formed his character. He came to his biological family when his grandfather died. Then he was so, Stig was almost nine years old then, so his childhood history created that distance. Given that, he was also a totally different character from them. He was very much alike his mother, who's, who died in 1999, uh, 1991, unfortunately. But uh, Stig was energetic, he was an entrepreneur, he was curious, he was active, he was always on the move. And his father and brother were the complete opposite, so the personal chemistry wasn't there either. But he was never into revenge. He was keeping a, you know, courteous uh, relationship with his father. Uh, we went out every year to buy a new crime novel for him for a Christmas present and so on. And so there was no hard feelings. There was no battles. There was no dramas like that. It was just distance.